A little drunk but I'm alright Cause I've been hanging with you And it feels like love Tell me if I'm wrong Cause it feels like love Yeah, it feels like love Come on, come on, come on, come on Come on, come on uh. Welcome to uh, another edition of Eric Waite Whiskey Studies. And in this video, I'm gonna be answering the question, is the Whiskey Vault a cult? While also doing a review of uh, the Eleanor Straight Bourbon Whiskey. So, I recently visited Texas, visited five distilleries there, and uh, had an absolutely fantastic time, although the weather was insane. Um, but <laughs> what is bad for humans seems to be really, really good for whiskey because I came away really, really impressed with the whiskeys uh, and the people. Had an absolutely fantastic time at, at all of them. So uh, when I first started a YouTube channel, first started off in wine, and my primary purpose was um, studying. It would be a means of ingraining into myself, notes about wine regions, wine classifications, and so forth, um, but also to share a passion for wine, do wine reviews. It's sort of my own self-study group, you know? Eventually, that grew into whiskey, as I was studying through the WC Diploma and came to Unit on Spirits and fell in love with whiskey. Then eventually that spawned off into a another channel uh, in which I uh, solely devoted to uh, whiskey, but still I went into doing a whiskey channel really quite serious. Uh, my channel's always been maybe a little bit more academic with a lot of notes and stuff like that. I've tried to develop it more into uh, about um, exploration and meeting up with people and, and travel, whether it's to Kentucky or to Scotland or around California, visiting distilleries or Texas. And I've tried to meet as many uh, fellow whiskey tubers as I can, but it still always had this sort of backbone uh, of uh, study, of academics, so I put, tend to put a lot of notes into my videos. And because I tended to come to things academically, a little bit more seriously, I also tended to, when I was looking, watch, watching other videos, other whiskey tubers, also looking for something which I would be primarily learning from. And so there's been a couple channels that are not as serious, a little goofy, um, and so when I first watched them, I would say uh, I tended to immediately write them off. Just because, not as bad people, just as it's not my thing. I want to be a little more academic. It seems a little too silly, a little, a little too goofy. The first one was the Scotch Test Dummies. I'm one of their hat right, the hat right now. And uh, later when I became sort of less serious, sort of lightened up a little bit, I found I really love Scott and Bart. Uh, they've become friends of mine. We've met up. I'm gonna be see them, seeing them again. Um, become just not only really a fan of the channel, but just love those guys personally. I love those guys. And come to uh, really respect them as well as, as people um, and, and really in, enjoy them you know, in their non-serious approach to whiskeys. Well, it's all the same thing regarding uh, Daniel Whittington and Rex um, Williams. Uh, they put uh, the balls in goofballs. Uh, 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 really, really, really goofy. Different sense of humor than, than what I've got. And, you know, you got Daniel uh, they both have these insane beards, uh, and you got Daniel with this big ass, you know, thing hanging around his neck. Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I am Rex. I'm Daniel. He is a level something something whiskey sommelier. He's a Grand Master Whiskey Mooch Extraordinaire. Yeah. You know, call himself a level three whiskey sommelier. 
And I kind of rolled my eyes and I'm like, okay, where are these guys coming from? What's all this about? And um, you take a little sip. Being a wine sommelier, I was like, man, where is this coming from? Where do they get the credentials? Who's certifying them as this? Are they recognized in the industry? They learned about the, the they had a, uh, a school uh, um, in which they charged like $4,000 for a two day class with this whiskey marketing. Again, first impressions, I was not really, really thr thrilled with it. So one of the things that whiskey has taught me is Oftentimes, most of the times, you don't want to judge a whiskey by a neck pour. Um, bottles such as, particularly a little for a 10, I had a Highland Park, uh, Douglas Lang, um, that really, really changed as, as you work past the neck into the shoulder. And the same goes for people. Just as you don't want to judge necessarily a whiskey by a, a first impression, a neck pour, you want to get a little bit more into it. You want to get past the shoulders and get, get to more to uh, the center, the heart of the bottle to really understand it. The same goes for people as well. And while my first impression of the vault, the whiskey vault, the whiskey tribe, wasn't all that favorable. I, I just like, I don't know about these guys. I started watching the videos. I eventually joined the Whiskey Tribe on Facebook and just sort of watched. And, and my mindset was changing towards them. <clears throat> and then um, I came to like them. But still, I had a lot of questions. And I was like, yeah, but what about this? What about that? What about this? So I sent... Uh, Rex and Daniel, uh, one of my coins, with a little thank you card, my business card, a little thank you card, and didn't think twice about it. They mentioned in one of the videos, I never thought anything else about it. And then one day, just as I was preparing to do a whiskey review, uh, Daniel called me, and I was shocked. I was like, whoa, he's calling me, okay. We ended up spending like an hour and a half talking on the phone, and I would say all the questions, things that seemed iffy, he didn't like try to dodge anything. He just straight up answered me straight up. Um, truthful Ford, he was transparent about it all. And he even sort of knew that when they chose the word sommelier, because he actually began in the, in the wine world, he knew friends, associates that are sommeliers would also sort of cringe at the word. And then later on, I actually found that someone else has been using using the word, is, is known as a whiskey sommelier, Heather Green. A fantastic book that she's written, by the way, but I won't get into that. Um, and then I talked to a master sommelier, uh, Dustin Wilson, who's an acquaintance of mine, um, about this. This is when uh, Psalm 3 came out and I asked him, you know, what do you think about using this, this term? And what I discovered was he really didn't have a problem with it, so long as you're serving whiskey. And then there was a movie I remembered, Psalm 2, um, Into the Bottle, in which there was some dispute amongst master sommeliers about what exactly is a sommelier. What, what is a sommelier? A sommelier is a, is, a, is a position in a restaurant. Who is responsible for the wine program. They oversee service to the guests. That's a very simple way to look at it. You know, and I'm just keeping people happy. I'm popping corks. It's a very simple job. But that is open to interpretation. If you don't work in a restaurant, you don't know a sommelier. That's end of story, period. Yeah, I don't agree. So a sommelier is somebody that takes care of wine, period. Psalms are now educators, they're judges, they are suppliers, they are distributors. As soon as I stop working the floor, I'm no longer a sommelier, though. I'd like to be alive when that definition is finally written, to my satisfaction. Can there be any other business where there's so much bullshit? So there, there isn't even 100% agreement on what necessarily constitutes a sommelier amongst the master sommeliers, other than it, it involved wine. 
involves service. But one of the things in that video clip that I just showed you from Psalm 2 is, they didn't mention that sommeliers also have to learn uh, service of spirits, cocktails, whiskeys, although it's a smaller portion, under 10% of what a sommelier needs to do, um, but it is something they can be tested on during service. Also, um, there's been ventures into tea and sake and coffee because it's all about beverage service, right? Not just wine, although wine, of course, is the dominant beverage and, and part of the studies and exams, but these other beverages come in there and play as well. So with the master small, he said he didn't have a problem with recognizing that in this movie, there's not 100% agreement exactly what a sommelier is it's its origin just means a type of sort of a type of butler it means a wine servant but the role beyond the meaning of the end of the little word the role is much more encompassing than just wine the fact that a master sommelier doesn't have a problem with it the fact that um the term whiskey sommelier has already been used i kind of realized um you know it's kind of stupid to get so hung up about a word, all right? When I talked to Daniel about it, he said, they're looking for a word that was already known. If you try to coin a new term and a new word, the people aren't gonna know what you're talking about. So using the word sommelier, because people already know what it means, they know, it, it, you know what, it refer, what it refers to, what, is, what the association, the role, that then calling it a whiskey sommelier is just sort of carrying over. Now, Anytime you start something new and you venture out of what has been previously known, a lot of people are going to get uncomfortable, right? Um, you, you're breaking with tradition, tradition, right? Tradition, tradition, tradition. And that's what these guys have done. They have taken not only the, the, the word sommelier and fleshed out the part about serving whiskey, but they've completely taken the snobbery out of it. And I think that's been really, really important because these guys aren't just building a ch YouTube channel or running a school or now with a distillery, the Crowded Barrel, producing a whiskey. These guys have built a community. A community in which these guys our leaders by example not just by what they say but what what they do and so one of the things that really impressed me when I went down to Texas and met up with them is I sort of analyze everything to death I watch everything I, I, I observe and after doing some videos there one was on their channel you know two from my, my channel and everybody's just sort of hanging out, people drinking whiskey, people smoking cigars. There was a food truck there, people are eating hamburgers or, or whatever. Manly Miller, you magnificent bastard! As I was watching them um, and how they interact, not just with people who are guests there, but I saw them interact with their families. I saw how they are as fathers and as husbands. And that impressed me the most. Forget the whiskey school, forget the distillery, forget the marketing school, forget all everything else. Forget all that. All that is, is irrelevant. See how they are as neighbors to the community around them and see most importantly how they are with their families. That they aren't businessmen who are so focused on the business that they neglect their families and they aren't so much into whiskey that they neglect their families, the things that are the most important in life. And in a number of different ways that they have been leaders by examples is they take a time out to check themselves. On occasion, they do the whole dry week on quarterly. They do a dry week and they encourage people in the tribe to do the same, to make sure um, whiskey hasn't become your master, right? That you are in control. And they do that with humor as well. So um, 
I just want to say thanks to uh, Daniel and Rex for being hospitable to me. Thank you for uh, leading by example. Thank you for what you've done for the whiskey community. Thank you for what you have also done for other whiskey tubers. Um, and there's a lot more than I could say than what, than what I, I have said. Um, but I want to say to anyone who um, should doubt the sincerity, these guys are the real deal. Um, there's no bullshit. There's no um, fakery. There's these guys aren't like the televangelists, right? Who are just into religion in order to make a buck. These guys aren't like shyster politicians who are just trying to get gain power and make a buck in office rather than serving the people. These guys are, are the real deal. Are they perfect? No. Oh hell no. Um, I still think, I mean, these guys are goofballs, um, <laughs> you know, uh, they're a little wacky. I don't agree with everything that they say or do. I don't agree with everything that anybody says or does, right? Uh, but they're really nice guys um, and they're authentic and they're genuine. So anyhow, I, I just want to say uh, thank you to them and for the Whiskey Tribe community, uh, for you guys being who uh, you are. All right, now let's get into this whiskey. Um, it's a beautiful bottle. Um, it has their logo um, of the Whiskey Tribe on the front, which is the same image as on the Tribe coin on the front and the back. Um, this one is, is autographed. You can see that I got autographed when I was down there. One of the things that was kind of funny about it is when I uncorked it is this puppy was full, full to the top. Usually you got a little bit of head space. The sucker was full to the, full to the top. But before I get into this, here are my notes. Crowded Barrel Distillery, Eleanor Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Crowded Barrel Whiskey Company is the world's first crowdsourced distillery and is located in South Austin, Texas, next to the campus of Wizard Academy. It's a tiny little whiskey hamlet with a massive tribe of whiskey followers. Born as a product of Whiskey Tribe, the distillery sources, distills, ages, finishes, and bottles its whiskeys and is available for sampling at the Fang and Feather Tasting Room. This bottle of Crowded Barrel Distillery Eleanor Straight Bourbon Whiskey, Chapter 6.2, was aged in American oak for 44 months. It is bottled at 114.6 proof or 57.3% alcohol by volume, and this is bottle number 385. All right, so in case you were wondering, you saw that little picture there. Um, full reveal of about the whiskey is on the, so is on the side here. They give a little bit of a sort of a story and a background on the back. It's really hard to pick it up on a photo, um, so you probably can't see. It's called named Eleanor, and if you could see through here, there's actually uh, this back label has a photo of a woman, Eleanor, on that side. So if you could see it really well, you'd be able to see through here and see a picture of a woman. I'm gonna put it up here, but I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it or not. Let me see how that goes. But let's get into the whiskey. So overall, I would describe this as a classic bourbon. It's got a sweet caramel corn on the nose, vanilla, cinnamon, sort of a, a cherry pie note, nutmeg, sweet oak, loads of vanilla. It has a vanilla pudding. Has a vanilla wafer, banana, will a, a, a vanilla a wafer pudding uh, trait on it. Caramels, almost like a, a caramel um, covered apple, you know, like you get at Halloween time. How many different ways can you describe classic bourbon notes, right? It it's all there on the palate. Mm. Real silky in texture. You get the warmth, you get the heat going on there, right in there. On the back end, I do get a little bit of a nuttiness, almost like, like a peanut, pe peanut butter character to it. The weird thing is, so I've gotten down below the shoulder here. Each time I come back to it, the mid to the finish seems a little different. Sometimes, I've, so I've had 
let's say four glasses out of it. Sometimes I've had, it's just sweet on sweet on sweet all the way through. This time, it actually finishes with like the sort of nutty peanut butter note on the back end, which I wasn't getting before. It has nice development. It's sweet, it's silky. It has warmth here, but I'm actually not getting a major bite on the palate. It has a nice creamy mouth uh, filling feel. Yeah, you know, sort of that sort of viscous mouth coating feel. I really, really like this whiskey. Um, what would I give it as a score? I'm gonna give it a solid 90 points. A classic bourbon done really, really, really well. Um, there's a nice, I would say medium to medium plus length finish. And I really, really, I really, really uh, like it. It, it. It's really, really nice. Looking forward to seeing what they continue to produce, um, not just in terms of whiskeys, but uh, in terms of uh, in their leadership in the whiskey community um, and how the school continues to develop. And who knows, one of these days, maybe I'll get down there uh, and sit in on a class. All right, that's it for this review. If you subscribe to this channel, oh, by the way, I didn't answer the question. Is the Whiskey Tribe a cult? Hell yes. If you haven't already, subscribe, please do. If you want to continue watching my videos, make sure you ring the bell so you get a reminder and uh, link and, and uh, share this with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and other social networking channels. Until next time, cheers.